Boxing is one of the most famous sports in the world. Some of the most recognized athletes are boxers like Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather and Mike Tyson. They have become legends in the sports world. Boxing is aptly dubbed the sweet science, but professional boxing's greatest bouts aren't always defined by strategical brilliance. How do you like it? How do you like it? From blistering slug fests to unforgettable triumphs of will, the matches on this list encompass all the qualities that make the ring game great. I would have beaten him earlier. There have been many excellent boxing matches that have taken place in the past. Round 10 continues after the bell. These bouts have been about leaving it all out on the ring, incredible knockouts, iconic moments, and fighters showing heart for the sport. It is in some way quite disturbing how much as boxing fans enjoy the sight of two fighters going to hell and back brutally beating the living daylights out of one another. A lonely and unforgiving sport where respect is earned in the most savage way, boxing has offered an infinite list of great nights entertainment. And here we take a look at first part of our new series. Foreman was an Olympic gold medalist and former heavyweight champion who had only one loss on his professional record. In October of 1974, Foreman was stopped by Muhammad Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle. The fearsome puncher, who had demolished Joe Frazier and Ken Norton, found himself in nothing less than a crisis of identity. We're about to bring you what we think promises to be a slugfest. Ron Lyle was a legit heavyweight contender lost in the title shot to Ali the year before. Lyle was also coming off an impressive knockout victory against the savagely hard-hitting top contender Ernie Shavers. Well, I'm looking to see if Foreman has really sharpened up his punches and to see how Ron Lyle is going to offset uh, Foreman's awesome power. With 20 seconds remaining in the opening round, Lyle landing a crunching right hand that tadded home on Foreman's jaw. Good right by Lyle and he's got Foreman in trouble. Rounds 2 and 3 were Foreman's, but just slightly, as Lyle spent a lot of time trapped in corners and not doing much about it. Told you we'd have a slugfest and that's what we've got. The fourth round was named the sixth most exciting round in boxing history by The Ring in 2001. Lyle first knocked Foreman down with a devastating right and then went in for the kill only to then find himself on the deck after a brutal right from Lyle Foreman. The two swung furiously at each other for the rest of the round and Foreman was down again after a tremendous left from Lyle. Early in the fifth, Foreman had to survive more intensive punishment from Lyle, but then ended the fight in an almost cruel manner after maneuvering Lyle into the ropes. It was brutal, it was merciless and it was exhilarating. On the 13th of November 1992 at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Evander Holyfield defended his titles against Riddick Bowe in a highly anticipated bout which was just the start of an amazing rivalry between two great fighters. The second contest took place a year later, again in November, but this time at Caesars Palace. And once again, heavyweight of the Holyfield has lost his titles in a shocking majority points defeat to Michael Moore in April 1994. And new Holyfield had looked sluggish in his warm-up fight against Ray Mercer after being out of the ring for over a year. 
Both had kept himself busy with four fights since his defeat to Holyfield. One was a no contest against Buster Mattis Jr. Declares this bout a no contest. This was followed by an almost total shutout points win over Larry Donald. The New Yorker then captured the WBO heavyweight title from Britain's Herbie Hyde in a devastating sixth-round knockout. That may be it. Both defended it against Jorge Luis Gonzalez in a similar fashion. The third and final battle between the two warriors took place in November 1995, again at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. It was perhaps the most brutal of the three fights. As the rounds progressed, it became clear that Holyfield was slowing down as the bigger men in bow continued to land heavy artillery. In an indelible moment that came in round six, a crushing Holyfield left hook sent Bo crashing to the canvas. Round 8 began as while the two again exchanged at close range. This time it was Bo who landed the right hook to the Holyfield jaw, depositing him on canvas. The action-packed affair ended at 58 seconds of round 8. Supreme as the best heavyweight in the world, Ready. Big Daddy Michael Moore and Bert Cooper were at different stages of their careers when they clashed for the vacant and rather dubious WBO world title and gay fight fans, one of the all-time great brawls in heavyweight history. I said, well, I'm just gonna have to box, and I think I did damn good. Moore, a former WBO light heavyweight ruler, went in as the undefeated 28-0 with 26 KOs, number one ranked WBO contender, while Cooper, 27-8, 24 KOs, was ranked number two. The Philadelphian shot at Moore was made possible because of his impressive performance six months earlier against the true heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield. I'm just not playing, I'm just, I'm just going for blood. Their first round was three minutes of time capsule splendor, worthy of being preserved for future generations to admire. Cooper quickly put Moore down with an onslaught along the ropes. But the cronk hardened Moore wasn't ruined by this poor start, dropping his opponent with a flush shot to the chin. Moore went down again in the third round, but got up and fought his way back. Cooper started the fifth by cornering Moore as he continued to swing away, but Moore seized his opportunity coming out of the corner to assemble a gorgeous combination that ended in a right uppercut to Cooper's undefended chin. Oh, 